Alrighty guys, welcome back. It will be time to take a look at the Chameleon. Now the Chameleon is a fusion between the RB, Blackbird and the Gila. This is a cover top cruiser. It has a bonus on tracking disruptors. It has a bonus on guidance disruptors. It has a bonus on drones, uh, on medium drones to be more accurate. And it has a bonus on missiles. So... On paper, this is definitely one of the more interesting ships in the game, and it will be interesting to see what this little ship can do. So, uh, first thing first, let's take a look at the trade description, basic info. It can fit the sun of field generator, it can fit a cover drops cloaking device, minus 50% sun of field generator activation time, a very nice bonus on medium drone damage and medium drone effective hit points. This ship does take advantage of the expert skills like the other new faction cruisers and just like the new navy battleships. Plus 10% drone damage, plus 10 km drone command range, this only affects medium drones by the way. Expert cruiser command bonus will give you plus 12.5% missile kinetic and thermal damage and it will give you a very nice 5% shield resistance bonus per level, which is a little bit better than the shield resistance bonus that we have on the Gila. And over here we have a cloaking uh, device lock delay bonus and tracking as well as a guidance disruptor jammer strength bonus. Overall, I have to say a very, uh, very interesting ship, definitely one of the more unique ones in the game. It does combine a lot of, a lot of stats from a lot of ships. Two drones, four high slots, three medium slots, five low slots, three combat, and three engineering rigs. The Chameleon is of course primarily a shield tank, don't armor tank the Chameleon, it's just not going to work. A pretty decent capacitor, definitely a better capacitor than the capacitor on the Celas, but it's a little bit lower than the capacitor on the Fiend. The ship is, I would say, one of the slower faction cruisers. It's definitely faster than a Stratius. But it's definitely not slow, uh, so uh, it's fairly fast, but not as fast as some of the other new cruisers that have been added to the game. So let's take a look at the build. So with this build, I have rapid missiles, and here you can take a look at the stats of the rapid missiles. The stats will be enhanced, but at the same time, kind of kind of reduced uh, with the special mode which is the sniper mode that I'll show you when I uh, unlock but I'm fairly happy with how the missile stats on this ship look. One scrambler, one tracking disruptor and one web. As for the drones I have the offense Valkyrie and offense Vespa. Both are quite expensive uh, but since this ship will be expensive when <laughs> when the the boxes go away it would be very nice to have these drones on the chameleon for the maximum performance now don't use the small drones on this ship because it doesn't have a bonus on them so remove all the small drones and use only medium drones because they will have the best stats on on this ship in the low slots one after burner, one large booster, a clocking device, and dual C type invulnerability fields. A classic setup that uh, I run on this ship. As for the nano core, well, you only have one nano core. Now, I've been told that you can't use the old nano cores, uh, the, the Gila nano core, because th it's not the same ship. So unfortunately, uh, I believe and uh, I believe and I've heard that you can't use the old nano cores. So I would say wait for the new nano cores to arrive. But the current nano core is a Concord past nano core. So if you want to get the nano core for this ship or any other new faction ship, uh, you can do that. The nano core is completely free and farmable from the Concord pass. Okay, well, uh, time to. Time to play around with the with the build here. Oh, but first let's take a look at the rig. So I will show you a tank and DPS build that you can use on the chameleon. First one, the tank build. Now I covered the resistance holes, which is 
EM and thermal and I added one uh, field extender to increase the overall volume of the shield and here you can take a look at the engineering rigs I have one power grid rig because this ship doesn't have that much power grid definitely the lowest power grid out of the new faction cruisers but that should not be a a big problem it should still be enough to basically fit whatever you want uh, on this cruiser now let me show you the active stats of this ship 86,000 hit points 77, 85, 79 and 83 percent resistance which is you know pretty good and definitely pretty solid for a cover top ship 893 meter per second is the afterburner speed of course with a different rig cloud and with an core you can be much faster than that now here is the sniper mode it has some very interesting traits now the one thing that I don't really like about the sniper mode is the fact that it will reduce your DPS while it will increase the alpha damage which honestly is, is okay uh, if you plan to use this ship as a long-range combat ship and I can see that the chameleon is kind of meant to be used uh, for a more long-range type of combat 397 DPS, basically the DPS has been halved but the range on the missiles will be increased, the range on drones will be increased the performance of the drones will be enhanced and uh, things like that so definitely a very weird bonus I mean when I say weird uh, let's say the let's compare the special mode between the between the score top cruiser and between the cells the cells does have minus 20% extra velocity it does also have lower capacity regeneration but it doesn't cripple your DPS it increases your DPS while the snipe mode on this ship does improve the alpha damage but it doesn't really improve the total DPS but I guess for sniping that can be interesting I'll be testing that out later as well you can also use a gun disruptor instead of the tracking disruptor you can fit uh, the disruptor module based on the target if the target is a missile boat use the use the gun disruptor if it's a turret boat use the tracking disruptor which is you know uh, very nice and I just added some new drones to the to the drone bay also very useful to have always make sure that you have the whole beehive in your ship because you never know when you have to replace your drones or you never know when the player decides to kill your drones happens quite often in my case now besides the rapid missiles you can use the normal medium missiles which I'll be equipping right now since this ship is kinda meant to be used at long range I believe the medium the normal medium missiles are definitely going to be the way to go but we will see how the performance goes with the torpedo launchers Later on, the DPS is uh, going to be a little bit higher and with a long-range build don't use a scrambler, use a long-range disruptor and now you can match the orbiting distance the optimal range uh, from the tracking disruptor and the optimal range of the of the disruptor and of the, of the point to be more to be to differentiate between the tracking disruptor and the warp disruptor, two different things and you can use a micro warp drive and a capacitor battery also a very uh, a very interesting undocking a very interesting build that you can test out now cover top ships are not really known to be the tankiest th but this is definitely the tankiest co cover top ship that we currently have in the game uh, so you can definitely do some sacrifices in the low slots for some other utility modules, uh, for example, like the capacitor battery and other things like that. There is a lot of different options, but you should still rely on stealth primarily. Uh, that's your main main defense on uh, on the chameleon in PvP. 
almost going 2 km per second with the micro warp drive, which honestly is pretty good. Uh, fairly fast with the micro warp drive, definitely I would say the way to go for long range kite. After all, for kiting you can use the micro warp drive. Missiles don't have tracking, so you will not have any problems with hitting the target. And drones are also not going to have an issue to have an issue with the with their speed because they have uh, they have fixed that problem a long time ago. So now the drones will dock even if you are going very fast. And the DPS in the sniper mode is also going to be lowered, but the range on those missiles is fantastic. Definitely a very interesting uh, medium-sized sniping ship. And now with the torpedo launchers, your DPS is going to be the highest, but the range is going to be the shortest. After all, the torpedo launchers are the equivalent of the heavy assault missiles from EVE Online, so you can expect high DPS, but very, very short range. Now, if you decide to go with a, uh, let's say, powered heavy build, you can easily do the Undocking. large booster and large capacitor battery combo that works flawlessly on this ship but for that you have to sacrifice the engineering rigs for power grid but besides that uh, it should work really well and that's also one of the builds that uh, the gila is also using but i know that this is kind of classified as a cover top skiller but it is still a cover top cruiser and they work slightly different from the from normal ships however a very interesting very interesting hybrid cruiser I, I call it hybrid cruiser because it combines like three ships and uh, in that aspect it is definitely one of the more interesting ships in the game and here you can take a look at the stats i like how it also kills your speed now I would say the snappy mode would be more interesting if it wouldn't have such a speed penalty. I mean, the Celos doesn't have that speed penalty, but it has higher DPS. However, you can use drone bombs on this, and the drone bombs are definitely very dangerous. So, this ship is still highly, highly interesting uh, in that aspect. I don't have the drone bomb implant. So uh, I'll be doing the I'll be doing the more in-depth review on the ship uh, when uh, I can when I get access on the when the ship is released on the test server, so that I can have the access to the bombs and all the things that I want to play around with to to see what the performance of this ship can uh, you know can be and just so that I can give you a lot more builds because. My goal is to give you guys as many ideas as possible and my goal is to give you as many builds as possible so that I can help you with building uh, these ships in a proper way. I mean, I, s I saw so many chameleon style lately in a very hilarious manner. I'm not gonna say any names, but yeah, th there are some chameleons that, that died in a very dumb way. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, my goal is to prevent such, such dumb losses. And I'm... Um, trying to fit the large large capacitor battery to the large booster but for that you have to sacrifice more the you have to sacrifice the engineering rigs to be the power rigs with another power rig I'll, I'll definitely be able to fit that but I don't have it equipped and I'll kind of I kind of like to to keep the current layout so so yeah uh, but overall a very interesting idea with the large booster and a large past the battery combined with the good tank it does allow you to to last for a very very long time in combat and i, I mean that's one of the one of the main aspects of gurista pirate ships have to keep in mind that this is a gurista pirate ship so they will have uh, those traits of of that pirate faction now you can do a build that's a balance between tank and dps this also can be used as a pve build or pvp build the only difference would be the the clocking device in, in, if for a pve build use a large capacitor battery instead of the clocking device and use a nosferatu to maintain the capacitor but this is one of the ways how you can build this ship and i have some pretty nice dps the dps would be much much higher if i uh, if i had better skills for the ship but 
the DPS is still uh, very solid. You can use the damage tool or you can use a large extender. Both are definitely very interesting options for this cruiser. A zero kilometer orbit against snipers. It will definitely last for a very long time uh, in in combat, and you can do a passive shield tank just like this, which will give you some very nice shield resistances. You can also do the build where you uh, add one drone damage amplifier, one adaptive and one damage troll, or one adaptive and one large extender, or you know, uh, extender plus plus amplifiers. I mean, there is like a lot of ways how how to do a PvP build on this ship, and I would say there is not really a best build. Every build has its advantage and disadvantage. And there will be ships that counter some builds, but will not be able to counter other builds. So it is extremely situational, and all of the builds uh, will be working really well, uh, given the given the combat situation. Uh, 120,000 hit points, 77, 85, 79, and 83 percent resistance. Again, really solid. And since I forgot to show you that it can cloak, well, here you go. The ship uh, can can cloak just fine. After all, it is a cover tops cruiser. Hey, cover tops gila! I actually never thought that I'd be flying a cover tops gila. Uh, I made jokes about it like two years ago, where I slapped uh, a cloaking device on my cinnabel, and there is a still a cloaky cinnabel, and there is a cloaky gila right now. So, yeah. Quite a lovely, unique little ship. Uh, again, these ships, when you start flying them, you realize how, how interesting they indeed are. Okay, so let me play around with the build a bit more. Let me see what uh, else can I slap. A damage control, also a very good idea. The, the damage control is very useful against high, high DPS ships, Undocking. high DPS burst implants like the drum bombs. Like the barrage implant, it can also be very useful against the um, pulse leather and focus crystal. I mean, the damage control is currently one of the most one of the most useful modules in the game. I still wish that the damage control was a bit more active, uh, like in Evil Nine, like it used to be in Evil Nine. That would be pretty awesome. 281,000 hit points when the damage control is active, that's pretty good, that's pretty good solid stats. Alright, the 90, 93, 91 and 92% resistances on this cute little ship. I call all these ships cute because they are, that's just how it goes, that's just how it goes. Now, uh, this is a PvE build that I was talking about, but uh, for a proper PvE build, at least for high sec, this is a high sec only build. Uh, I will replace the rigs to be uh, to be DPS rigs. After all, in high sec, you already have some decent defense. You only mostly need uh, high DPS for high sec. So uh, I'll add three drone uh, burst adapters. And uh, okay, this will this will do the job. And if I had better skills with the with the bonuses, my DPS would be about 1,350 DPS. With the drum bombs, that would be plus 300%. So uh, we're looking at you know perhaps somewhere about six to nine thousand DPS on the on the chameleon. If you have the the run bomb implant Undocking. and if you have the maxed out skills for this ship. So, uh, let's see the maximum DPS with this build. Now when I do a in-depth review on, the, on this ship, uh, on the test server with a lot of different builds, with integrations and things like that, I'll be showing you the DPS with the drum bombs. Again, the drum bombs are currently one of the most overpowered implants in the game. Uh, they are one of the only implants that that have only been buffed but never nerfed. 
and I say that they will nerf the drone bombs, I mean it's obvious that they will not really sure when but it's coming so uh, enjoy the bombs while it lasts because you can guarantee that that's going to be nerfed after all the damage output on that on these things is just insane and I would say currently the chameleon does have the highest drone DPS out of any uh, drone boat in the game but for that to be more accurate I'll have to go on, on the test server to compare the ships with equal skills when I say compare ships uh, means compare the compare the Stratios, Gila and Chameleon so that we can <coughs> so that we can see uh, which one of these ships has basically the highest DPS output and this is also uh, the DPS build that I would probably use basically the DPS build that I've been using on most of my cruisers an old build that proved itself to be extremely effective and so far it uh, didn't let me down but again I have to be careful because there are some ships uh, that can easily tank a full-on DPS build like this so it is very important and crucial to know which targets to engage and which targets to avoid also very important important to know that uh, for some ships you have to change the build to a tank build so against the vast majority of ships this will work just fine but against more tank ships I would still go with a tank build to counter a tank build so uh, let me also do a lot more combinations like in the Guardian Disruptor and the Tracking Disruptor are both very interesting uh, again depending on the target I really wish that this ship had like 4 medium slots uh, I would use both at the same time that way you can easily counter both uh, weapon types if uh, you like to do PvP but this ship is currently limited to only 3 medium slots so uh, perhaps they might change them in the future I do expect I do expect these ships to be buffed at one point uh, most importantly I, I expect them to increase their passive shield regeneration but that's just what I expect I mean there is still like there are they're new ships fresh ships and there is going to be balancing there's going to be there's going to be patches that will improve uh, their performance and so again I mean I'm telling you stuff that I expect so when More it happens active. the price of these ships will probably go up now Surprisingly, uh, I found this ship to be pretty good for an alpha clone. I, I don't know how. Uh, my uh, I did play around with this ship on my alt, which doesn't have any skills for drones, doesn't have any skills for missiles, but somehow it still uh, worked really well when I say it doesn't have skills. It doesn't have any advanced or expert skills because that, uh, that account is mostly an alpha clone just for, for tackle. But I did play around with this ship on my alt account. Uh, will be shown in this video after this first run and honestly it did work really well I had about 550 DPS with this ship with the current build that I'm using which honestly was uh, really good now of course alpha clones can't use C types but the difference in DPS between the C types and the, the green one was minimal and still like I had 500 DPS with uh, with this ship as an alpha clone, technically, uh, technically as in, uh, technically as an alpha clone because uh, my uh, my account my alpha my alt account doesn't have any again doesn't have any skills for drones doesn't have any skills for for missiles uh, it has only the basic skills for the ships that I use to tackle stuff basically so that's kind of funny surprisingly worked better than the Cinnabel as an alpha clone so that's uh, one. That's one thing to. That's one thing that's worth thinking about. Now this is the high sec PVE build, and in the hands of a pilot who obviously has better skills for drones, you know, you would be surprised. Uh, but I fa I accidentally uh, did reset a lot of skills. 
uh, back when I was resetting from the lasers. From the lasers, I actually reset the drones and lasers, so uh, I don't have as good of drone skills as I had back then. Back then, I had the drones all on level five, but since I kind of stopped using them, I didn't really need them. So uh, yeah, I reset that. But but even with my skills, uh, the performance of this, of this ship is really solid. If I had drone bombs, I could easily boost the... I can. I could easily like triple the DPS on this ship, which would be fantastic. And uh, one of the more interesting facts that you can do with drone is basically that uh, tripling in DPS upon a click, basically extremely high alpha. Now, a lot of you guys have asked me before, but uh, asked me the question, can you use the missile implants on on these ships? Now, technically, I guess you can, but your DPS is mostly going to come out of the drones. Now, if you don't have the missile implant, if you don't have the drone bomb implant, you can obviously use the missile implant. I mean, any extra DPS is going to be good DPS. But if you have the missile implant and if you have the drone bomb implant, use the drone bomb implant because that's where most of your DPS is going to come out of. So, uh, the question is, yes, you can use the missile implant only if you don't have the if you don't have the drone bomb implant or if you are in uh, if you if you're doing PvP with the ship then the tactical missile implant can also be pretty good because it does give you extra points on the target and that can prevent your target from uh, escaping because it does add a lot more points to them so yeah uh, you have like three different four different implants yeah four di four different implants there is that uh, there is that electronic warfare implant that basically tampers with the lock, uh, lock of the of the target. Also, a pretty good option. Also, a valid option, and you can easily uh, do that one. You can easily use that one as well. So you have four implants, and all of them uh, will work really well. But for maximum DPS, use the drone bombs because this ship does have the best bonus on drones. Basically, again, like. It's like the Gila, just like the Alasink, just like the Worm. All of these ships have bones on small. In the case of the Worm, small drones. In the case of the Gila, medium drones. In the case of the Alasink, large drones. A very unique trait of the Gurista pirate ships. And honestly, so far I have been enjoying the ship. It's pretty fun to fly. Definitely a a very unique experience uh, because of all of the different stats. I mean, all of these new ships are meant to be quite special. They're meant to give you the, ref the fresh feeling, I guess, and they definitely did that with me. Now, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of requests to buff the Drestia, and I can kind of see why because the Drestia is very similar to the Vigilant in a lot of ways the some players say that the Vigilant is better because it's faster again I have to check out the ship for myself before I before I jump to any conclusions I mean that's what I do uh, before I jump to conclusions before I start saying stuff I usually go and test it out for myself to to get the to get to know the ship you know. That's what a content creator should do, and that's what I'm doing. So, uh, let's see. Oh, wrong screen. I was looking at the wrong screen. Was I was confused for a second. Was wondering, wait, wait a second. Where did my ship go? Okay. Uh, now a zero kilometer orbit is pretty doable for PVE. Uh, the torpedo launchers are definitely a pretty good choice. I mean, you can use any missile system that you like, if you prefer long range combat, use the normal missile launchers. If you prefer a balance between range and uh, DPS, then the rapid missiles. If you prefer We're maximum DPS, then torpedo launchers, but with the torpedo launchers you will be orbiting 
very closely. Now, for PvE, I didn't really find much use uh, with the with the snipe mode. Honestly, it makes the ship slow, uh, easy to hit, and it basically reduces your DPS. So. This ship for PvE, at least the special mode, is not really, I would say, that impactful. The Celos that did have a very, very nice uh, impact on the PvE performance. It did clear faster because of the extra 30% uh, rate of fire on the turrets. It does reduce the damage on the turrets, but it increases the rate of fire, which technically does increase the DPS, and it doesn't slow down your ship that much uh, so that you can still speed tank the targets. The find is... well it's a, it's a tanky ship, it's not really meant for PvE but you can easily run PvE with it and its special mode does reduce your DPS so again the find special mode is also not that impactful on the clear speed but you can easily run, uh, run PvE with that ship, it, it does work really well. The defense mode can be a panic button or defense mode can basically uh, serve uh, to give you enough tank to withstand a PvP attack for example, a player in low sec until reinforcement arrives, so there is definitely a lot of use for for the special mode on all of these ships. Now I've heard the Adrestia special mode is basically extra armor repair or extra shield repair, I have to double check that. So. The Adrestia definitely has the potential to be a fantastic active tank, which, you know, will make that ship pretty good for PvE and PvE, because extra repair is always welcome for both. You can focus on more DPS uh, in, th uh, in that aspect. But again, uh, we'll be double-checking that when I jump in the Adrestia. So far, as you can see, I have been flying all of them one by one, and... My apologies if, if it took me a bit longer to upload this video, I had a lot of things, I had a, I was very busy and I just wanted to make sure that I have the, I have the, you know, at least to have the right skills to, to get decent performance out of, uh, out of this ship and I also wanted to make sure that I don't mess anything up because as you all know I like to first test out the ship before I make a video about it, that way I know what works and what doesn't work. And so far I think I've been doing a pretty good job at that. Now, as with the integration rigs, that's a question that I'll be asked for sure. I don't really know the exact numbers that I will get on the test server when I take this ship out for a spin there, but I can make this thing super tanky. And I have a unconventional build in my mind that uh, basically will make this ship work like a Gila. Does have very similar build like a Gila, but with with much much more tank because the Gila has a four percent bonus uh, on sh on the shield resistance per skill. Now let me just double check that. Just just double checking uh, to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. Yeah. 4% uh, bonus per skill level, while this thing has 5, so a total of 5% increase, total. So yeah, uh, you can technically ignore the cover tops capability of this ship, and you can technically build the Chameleon as a tankier version of the Gila that can talk, and that can open a sign. So, I believe that with these special ships, you can and you have the option to use the unconventional builds. Now, when I say unconventional, I don't mean uh, cursed hybrid tanks. Whoever, whoever makes the claim that hybrid tank is good is, is just lying to you. It's not good. It's, it's terrible. Uh, don't combine shield and armor tank. It's just not good. It's just not good. Just don't do it. It, that's one of the things that ruins the experience of the new of, of new players basically because I know from my, from my perspective uh, from what I see and from what my uh, from what my friends tell me from what you guys tell me and from what other players tell me that 
hybrid tanking it's one of the reasons why uh, players are so unhappy with uh, with their ship it's because they have a bad build for them and of course they will not be happy about uh, about the ship so one of my goals is to show you how to build a ship and of course to give you as many builds as possible and in one of the next videos uh, I'll be doing a more in-depth review of all of these ships my most exciting part the most exciting part that I'm excited about is uh, the the faction cruiser versus faction cruiser thing that I'll do I'll be fighting these ships to the death uh, with uh, a bunch of different PvP ships uh, with, with a bunch of different PvP builds just to show you all the different scenarios that you might encounter in PvP that's one of th one of the things that uh, I uh, will do I didn't forget about that it, I just need to get act I just need these ships to to be available on, uh, on the test server so that uh, I can show you uh, all of the different tactics in a more you know uh, faster way because it will not be affected by staff that much but also to uh, include ways to counter staffs with all sorts of different ships and I think that would be that would be interesting to see how how it will work okay well uh, let me go and get in the alt. Now this is uh, my alt running the ship. My alt is currently tier seven, tech level seven. So far from far from ideal, uh, but still has some pretty good performance uh, for this ship and are absolutely usable uh, as a alpha clone. Definitely. Surprising. I mean, I'm quite shocked that it's working so well. I expected like 200 DPS or something. No, I, I got more than that. <laughs> I got 500 DPS uh, with the green modules, which is surprisingly, surprisingly good. So, uh, out of the four faction, out of the four new faction cruisers, which one is my favorite? Well, that's tough. That's a tough, that's a tough question. I, I will, I will get all of them. Now I have the idea to wait for the boxes to go out. Now I recommend uh, that you buy at least one of these ships, one of each. And basically keep them, use them and wait for the market price to go up. The market price for these ships should go up once once the boxes go away because that way that uh, then the accessibility of these ships will be much uh, much more difficult. They will be much more difficult to obtain and uh, therefore the price will go up there is a lot of materials involved in producing them so uh, their price will definitely go up and there is a chance to make some good profits by selling them you buy them for I don't know like 1.8 billion and you sell them for 5 billion that's just an example of what uh, what might happen uh, talk with all of my friends that you know are in the known and they know what they're talking about and they said about about three to five billion might be the average price when they're really when the ships really get rare uh, perhaps even above five billion so there's a chance to, to make make some good cash from from selling these ships on the market and well, the, one of my plans is to do that I mean uh, I'll I will buy the four of them I think I'll use one or two I'm not really sure but the rest will be uh, probably uh, probably sold sold when the price of these ships goes up. Now I think the same can be said about the, f the new battleships. I'll also be flying them. Uh, don't worry, I'll be flying all of them. I mean, you know what I do. I like to make builds for ships. So the Marauders are on my list. And yes, I call them Marauders because the new battleships are indeed. Marauders, at least our version of them. I mean, just just look at their tank. Did you see it? The did you see the resistance? Insane. Like with the thermal circulation, I can make the armor tanks like full glass, 85% resistance. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a lovely tank that they have, and they also have some good DPS. Very excited to uh, jump in one of these ships, but I think let me check their price I don't have ESC for them right now so 
uh, we'll have to wait for the test server, I think, but 5.9, yeah, they're quite pricey currently. They're really expensive, and their price will go up when the when the boxes go away. Well, I mean, players did ask for Marauders, and they got the Marauders. They also asked for Navy ships, and they got Navy ships, so yeah, kind of interesting. Kind of interesting how how that works and how that goes. I think the Apocalypse Navy will be one of the more interesting ones to to check out, mostly because of its resemblance with the Paladin. It should have almost the same performance as one, while retaining some ridiculous tank, and I'll just make this one guess right now. I believe that they will add a special mode for the new Navy ships. When I say special mode, I, I don't mean like uh, the special modes like on the on the new faction cruisers. I mean a special module, the Bastion module, for example, that will enhance the DPS even more. They did the same thing with the faction carriers, and I believe that they will do the same thing with the with the new navy battleships, which is again something to be excited about. And honestly, the the new update has been pretty wild, and with the uh, with the super capital announcement, th things are going to be even more wild, because I believe Black Ops battleships are also around the corner, and the jump bridge option will be also available with Titans, so you are going to be able to jump from one place to the other place via the jump bridge and basically hot drop ships. Uh, from deep within your home territory. And it will not be limited to core top ships, it will be available to all ships to jump through the jump bridge. And that's going to be extremely fun. Combining that with the announcements that they made a while ago that they're working on bomber bombs, things will get extremely extremely fun you know when we get the bomber bombs i'm getting a h i'm dropping a hound and i'm i'm going to go drop bombs on so many <laughs> ships it's going to be pretty uh, going to be pretty funny bomber fleets are going to be pretty wild and i am extremely excited for that part of the game i loved it in evil line i will love it in this game as well so I'm definitely looking forward for the bombs, for the bomber bombs. I know many of you guys are looking for them, are looking forward to them as well. And I'll be hosting the bomber fleets, which, which will be fun, I think. Five bombers, ten bombers, fifteen bombers, dropping bombs on some, you know, on some gate camps and things like that. Will be fun. Uh, that that's going to be a lot of DPS, <laughs> a lot of alpha damage. Actually, not not a lot of DPS, a lot of alpha damage because bombs do, uh, they do alpha damage. They don't do DPS. They just explode, do like I don't know, 150,000 damage in in one hit, and that's going to be pretty pretty lovely. I have to admit. So, uh, back to the chameleon here. I like how the chameleon is uh, a lizard that can change its color. Uh, it's a very nice touch to the to the ship, honestly. It's basically a color-changing gila. Very nice. How did this little boat perform? It performed in an extremely satisfactory manner, which means that uh, I am very happy with the um, performance from this boat. Does this meet my expectations, does surpass my expectations at the same time. Uh, has probably the highest drone DPS in the game. It can cloak, doesn't have the same insta insta lock uh, ability that the Stratios has, but it does it should have higher DPS than the Stratios, which would be fun to test out when uh, I compare the two ships. I will compare them with uh, the normal ships just just to see their 
uh, the difference their differences and i think that's going to be uh, that's going to be fun so with that being said hope that you guys enjoyed if you would like to uh, if you would like to see more and if you would like to support me feel free to like and subscribe and with that being said stay safe fly safe and as always i'll see you next time